Well, everyone, welcome back. And I wanted to do a quick video here on how to navigate arrays. Uh, this is going to be an important part of understanding how to get a lot done uh, out of MATLAB, and that's just how to call uh, elements of arrays. Now, I know we've already t covered this a little bit, but I think there's a couple more points I want to emphasize that uh, should be looked at. So, uh, and that's just how you index into an array. I already gave the example. Let's let's do an, an array. I'm going to do the standard one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine array here. Um, this would be a nice three by three array where the numbers are uh, done sequentially. Now, there are a couple different ways of indexing array. Um, both are valid, and one is probably a little bit more powerful than the other, but you, I want you to get a sense of how this works. Um, first and foremost, in an array, I can reference any cell within that, any number within this array position here uh, by putting a number here. Now, I can do it in row column format, so if I say, to one, it's going to go, uh, or column row, I'm sure, sorry, uh, columns, uh, I mean row, second row, column one, four. So it's row column format. Uh, you can actually, if I said one, comma two, it's going to go to the first row and second column, and that will be that position. Now, that is one way to address values within an array. There is another way to do this as well and I'm going to bring this up and that's just with a single value I could say position a 1 and it'll give me the first position in that array if I said a 2 it'll give me the second position now you'll notice it actually did this by calling this the second position the way the single index value works is it goes down down down. It starts over, it goes down to all the first column, and then it starts over again. The next column goes all the way down, starts next column, and goes all the way down. So if I wanted to get number eight, I would have to call out one, two, three, four, five, the sixth position in this array. So I said A6, and that will give me this uh, value of eight. And that will give me a, a sense of how big, or like uh, how to, uh, using a single value, call any number in an, array, in, a, in an array. Like I said, this is very useful because you can iterate through and 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 uh, uh, call out any value in this position with just a single number as long as I understand that format. Now, <clears throat> there's one other thing you can do in this, and I think this is an important point to also note, is we've already shown in class and I think uh, elsewhere that I can position and say one comma colon operator the colon will say it'll give me the entire range of a single column so uh, it's going to give me uh, the first row and it's going to give me every column position afterwards so it's going to give me one two and three if i said a colon comma one it's going to give me the first column and every position in it if i was to say a colon comma colon it's oops it's going to give me everything because that's all that's there. Now, look what happens though. If I say a colon, it converts everything in that array into a single column just and stacks it up in the way that it does the numbering. So it's 147, 147, 258, 258, and then 369. 369. This is just another shorthand way of getting all that numbers and uh, getting information from the cell, from the array. So what can you do with this? Well, for example, let's say we didn't, uh, um, we wanted to say size of A. Size of A gives you the number of rows and the number of columns in that array. What if I wanted to know how many values are there total? I could actually say uh, uh, size of a colon and it gives me one column with nine points and that tells me just how big that array is the same thing can be done with the col uh, with the command length length will tell you how long the positions are in the column uh, it gives me the uh, first position so it's actually a three column uh, uh, long uh, three three position long column 
I could then say length of a colon and this will just tell me how big the array, how many positions there are in the array. It can be very valuable when we get to the for loops and so forth, how you can iterate through a value, uh, a vector, or an array uh, to uh, achieve information. But this is just a really quick handed way of doing this. Um, okay. So, all right. So, um, let's show you a couple more things really quickly uh, for just editing purposes. Uh, one other thing is well, if I wanted to go ahead and create a new array, Note, I can obviously call functions in here, or I can cause uh, increased nesting. If I said a is equal to b, a colon b, I'm going to get an array that repeats itself in that way. I can put math in here as well. I could say a is dot times um, uh, 2, and it'll just add that appropriately. So now let's say, for example, I want to create a new array that is just a small subset of this. Let's say I want it to be just starting from 8 down to 16 and 9 to 18. I just want to take these eight values out of this array. So how can I do that? So I can do that by saying C, a new array, is going to equal to, and I can call the positions in that array um, in, in how I'm going to select it. So I can say, in this case, uh, B. And in this position, I can say B is equal to, I want the one, two, third row down, second column. So three, I'm going to start uh, one, two, three, third row down, and all these numbers. So one, and so I can go to the end. And is a nice little feature. I could have said three, four, five, six. It said six here, but if I didn't know the actual number, I could just type an end and it'll go to the end of the array or into that column. And then I can look at, and I want to start from the second row over, so two, and I can say colon end. Select that, and I will get a new array that just references that subset of values within here. And it's just a way to extract information. Of course, I could, again, nest that information Let's say I wanted to rearrange the columns and say I wanted um, uh, an array that put these two columns in front of this one. So let's clear the screen, B, and I wanted to just reorganize this. I could do that by saying C is equal to, and then in reorganization I'll say, well, I'm going to put a colon, I'll, put, um, I'll define my array, and then I'm going to say B, and it's going to be um, all of it. So all rows come up from 2 to 3 columns. Now that's going to be in columns. Now, since I'm going to stack these from this one and this one, and then add this one, I'm going to create a new column. It only needs a space. I could put a comma here comma or a space, but I'm going to put just a space here, and I should be able to say B, and I could say 1, or all of it, comma 1, call it out, and you'll see that we just re rearranged that array by just changing the labeling and the uh, indexing of this. This might feel a little strange to, to work with, it might be a little weird to, to use, but it's something I would would be very good to for you to get used to in understanding how this works because this is where some of the trickery in MATLAB will come about is knowing how to rationally rationalize your way through a data set uh, in this regard. But once you have these kind of arrays, and one other thing I can show you and where this indexing of the single colon is powerful is, is in things like the function mean. If I said mean of C, You'll notice I get in the mean of uh, the mean of every single column individually. So it's 7.5, 9, and 6. Each column gets an average individually. But oftentimes you may not want that. Maybe I want the average of the entire grouping. In which case, I can get that by simply saying mean C. And if you remember, the colon operator forces it all into one column, all that data. So I can force it all into one data set, get that, and I'll get an overall average for the entire uh, series and 
which you know it makes sense because obviously the mean of 7.5, 9, and 6, which is these three values here, which are the individual means of these three columns, and the three columns are the same size, that should also be average of 7.5. So that, that numbers work out and everything uh, makes sense in this regard. So uh, that's the end of some of these array uh, functions to look at and uh, 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 nesting and, and organizing. Uh, I encourage you to look through here and make sure you understand this because uh, there can be some uh, uh, trickery or, or things that get a little confusing with this and it just takes practice to get through it. So um, beyond that, there'll be another video uh, following this one on uh, MeshGrid and we'll continue on uh, for the rest of the week's lectures. So thanks and bye.